Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, Dmitry Leonov, who is the vice president of growth at a fascinating company called SaneBox, SaneBox.com. Dmitry, oh, real pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me, Doug. So you're known as a specialist in the email world, and in fact, there are sometimes what they call the three commandments of email. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Sure thing. So you know, we've uh, our, we started working on our company three years ago, and over this time, uh, we've been trying to make email better for our customers and for uh, for <laughs> the world as a whole. Um, and so as part of it, we've done a ton of research, uh, talked to a lot of people, and looked a lot, at a lot of our internal data. And so the three commandments is something we kind of crystallized uh, based on uh, thinking about this problem for a very long time. Okay, so to pace ourselves in the 10 minutes we have today, are we going to be able to talk about all three? Absolutely. Okay, great. And I also need to mention that uh, that uh, before the show, Dimitri said that if people like some of these ideas, that he's setting up a special discount code for the people who listen to Goldstein on Geld to get $10 off the product. So at the end, we'll talk a little more about those details. First, you have to find out what it's all about. And then at the end, he'll tell us how we can do that. So let's go through these three commandments. Great. So uh, the first commandment is that uh, email is like a game of Tetris. So if you think that by... Uh, doing, you know, sitting down and powering through clearing your inbox, uh, you'll eventually win the game. Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me before a vacation. I, I, when, whenever I go away, I say, let me just go through my inbox. And, you know, I, I got through hundreds, <laughs> right? And I'm, it just never ends. Okay. Yes, I relate to that. Well, the thing is, as in the game of Tetris, as soon as you get to zero, more keep coming in and faster. Right? So it's a the research uh, shows that the, the volume of emails continues to grow every year. And uh, so there was a study done by McKinsey last year uh, where they found that an average person, average employed person, spends 28% of their time or 13 hours a week wow. processing email. So if you think that you know, if today you're spending 13 hours uh, a week, then if the volume of email keeps growing, then next year is going to be you know, 15 and so on and so on. Sounds like a horror so, film. Okay, the blob. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's that's the reality. <laughs> uh, but so the, the the kind of gist of the first commandment is that because it's like a game of Tetris, you cannot think about winning it. So what you have to do is something has to change. And what that something is you, and it's your processes. It's how you think about email, uh, and how you uh, how you operate with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that brings us to commandment number two. Remember number two is do not let email be your number one priority. The, the problem here is that over the last few years, uh, you know, email went from taking 0% you know, of our time to taking 28% of our time uh, very quickly, very kind of suddenly without really anybody realizing what, what the heck just happened. <laughs> and so for, for most of us, our inbox is our default number one priority. You wake up in the morning, you check your email, you get sucked into it. And, you know, what do you mean you wake up it, in the morning? When you wake up in the middle of the night, you just tune in. Exactly. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, and then it's pretty much the same thing throughout the day. I mean, that, that's why it's become 28% because it's kind of, we, we get sucked into it. And it feels productive. It feels like you're doing something, um, you know, something good. Um, there's kind of a, an inherent gamification or instant gratification of, of clearing out your emails. But the reality is that your inbox is a to-do list that other people write on for you. And so if you are doing your email, or if clearing your inbox is your number one priority, uh, then you're essentially letting other people dictate your priorities. Okay. And the only, way to, the only way to get around this is to dedicate blocks of time to dealing with email. So what I try to do myself, and this is uh, as much do, do as I say, not as I do, because I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, but I, I, I really <laughs> fight this every day. Uh, I, when, I, when I first wake up, I still do check my email, but I, I, I look for urgent and important items that need to be dealt with. And if something is not urgent and important, then I close my inbox and I look at my priorities list and I try to knock, as, knock out as many as I can in the morning. And then I dedicate a set, a set time later in the day for actually dealing with my inbox. Okay, that sounds logical. We are talking with Dmitry 
Leonov, who is the vice president of growth at a company called Sanebox. He's been telling us uh, about the three commandments of email. The first one is he noted that email is like Tetris, that uh, it, it won't slow down and you, unless you somehow change the game. It's just going to keep coming. And rule number two is that you have to get dedicate uh, blocks of time to your inbox. Otherwise, you know, to segregate the time, he just told us, and now I'm kind of waiting for uh, rule number three. But let me also note that Dimitri said that at the end of the interview today, he's going to let people know how they can get a $10 discount code to the Sanebox uh, product, which I have to say, by the way, and maybe I should have said this at the very beginning, the way that uh, we got to Dimitri was because I was feeling overwhelmed with my email, and I kept asking all of my friends, what do you guys do? What do you guys do? And, uh, you know, no one had any good ideas except things like, jump off buildings and uh, quit my job. So uh, somehow I stumbled upon uh, Sanebox and started with it, and I got very excited. It really did change uh, the way I, 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 I dealt with email. So anyway, Dimitri, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Tell us about rule number three. Sure thing. Uh, well, so and rule number three is kind of a, a next logical step from rule number two, which is don't let email be your number one priority and your overall task list. And so rule number three is again about prioritization uh, but what it is is not all emails are created equal you have to prioritize and so the the problem is that every email client every email interface dedicates the same amount of space on um, on the screen to every email so it's it's subconsciously it's difficult for our brain to discriminate between an email from our boss or you know most important customer and a newsletter that you never read mm -hmm. Well, don't we just so, usually look at whatever comes in, whatever's on top of the list, meaning in chronological? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and so, exactly. So, and the priority is by most recent uh, as opposed to you know, prioritized. And so the, the solution to this is, as with the priority number two, you have to, you know, you have to know your priorities within your life. Um, and, and rule number three, um, when you are, when you are in that dedicated block of time, when you where you, your only task is to clear your email, uh, you, need, you need to differentiate between three kinds of emails, urgent and important, and those you need to deal with now, non-urgent and important, and those you can deal with later. In fact, you should deal with them later. And then there's the unimportant bucket. This is stuff that you need to delete, archive, whatever you like to do with those emails, but the key is to do it in bulk. Mm -hmm. And not to not to kind of get sucked into each individual email. When you say in bulk, it's because we just get so many of them. Exactly. So, and this is where this is where Sanebox, our our product, comes in. Uh, so we analyze the importance of your emails based on your past interaction with your inbox, and we move the unimportant ones into a separate folder out of your inbox, and uh, summarize them in the digest. So by and by dealing with those emails kind of in mass. Uh, you save a ton of time because what we see is an average inbox contains 58% uh, of the emails in an average person's inbox are those unimportant emails that you simply don't need to see. And by moving them out and dealing with them uh, in bulk, you save a ton of time. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I think I, I think you've recommended or your company recommends is not to unsubscribe from a lot of the, the emails we get. Why is that? Um, very interesting. So we hear this all the time from our customers, and we run into this pretty much every day. Um, when you're unsubscribing from a uh, you know, from a mailing list or some some uh, distribution list, uh, you are at a mercy of the person you're unsubscribing from, and you're really relying on their integrity. Uh, and this is because when you're unsubscribing, you are essentially exposing yourself as somebody who cares about their, well, first is a real person, <laughs> and number two, cares about their email. So you are a, a marketer's you know, dream country. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So they may just sell you something else? Is that the... Yeah, you just get added onto different lists. Mm -hmm. And so the, the solution is, and this is a, one of the features that we build, uh, we call it black hole. Uh, and so what that is, is if you enable this folder called same black hole, you'll, uh, all future emails from that sender will go straight to trash. So you didn't technically unsubscribe, but you'll never see them again. 
Yeah, I, I've used that many times. I always feel very powerful when I do it. <laughs> I'm never going to hear from this guy again. Actually, let me ask you, the way you've been describing email, quite frankly, is perhaps the way my mother, who is an anti-technology person, might even think about it. You make it sound a little bit evil. You say, well, people are spending you know, 13 hours a week doing their email, but isn't your email, and for many people, actually just the work? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, email overload is not. A lot of people blame email, and they say it's you know it's an antiquated platform that needs to be reinvented, and something else needs to be you know needs to take its place. Nobody has any suggestions. Uh, but the reality is that email is not the problem. Email is actually a an outcome of a much larger problem, and that is that we work more, <laughs> we work with more people, uh, and with faster communication cycles. So the fact that you, you can now check your email on your phone, hit reply, and send an email to someone else, uh, essentially you know, multiplies uh, the, the amount of communication that we receive. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, I, don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's evil at all. It's just how, we, you know, how we're thinking about it has become, uh, it's become our number one priority by default, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the wrong aspect. All right. All right, Dimitri, I have to say that, uh, first off, I, I like getting the philosophy behind your company, and uh, maybe I should have done this before I started working with SaneBox myself. And, other, and again, I just want to stress that uh, I really do feel that having being in a position in my day job that I'm a financial advisor, I do get, uh, I don't know, it feels like millions of emails, but I'm sure you're right that it's in you know, a week, it could be thousands. And uh, SaneBox, in fact, has made me a little more sane. So you said earlier that you would uh, let our listeners get a discount if they want to sign up. Could you just uh, maybe tell us now how we could do that? Absolutely. Uh, go to SaneBox.com slash guilt. Okay, so if people go to SaneBox.com slash G-E-L-T, like Goldstein on guilt, and we'll put a link to this in the show notes, then they can get a discount there. Perfect. And SaneBox is the, the opposite of insane. <laughs> Indeed it is. All right. <laughs> Dimitri, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.